Uh, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, before I thought I would really demo or test my drivers, I thought it'd be a nice idea to to talk the to talk about some of the tools which are very you know handy while you are uh, trying to talk to some electronic device or, or test your drivers. Uh, <clears throat> And, and of course talk about the the application side of the driver because because your application you know is not quite interested how these data are being pulled and pushed from from device and and all the protocol stuff you know and the crcs and all, all the stuff for an application point of view i mean application just wants the data in the correct format and, and how it's being pulled when all the stuff its application is not at all interested and and the point of uh, doing it is that that driver writing is very specialized but application writing should be yeah not that specialized yeah anybody you know who has little knowledge of uh, some some <clears throat> high level languages which are very easy i mean which are normally very easy and straightforward can can use your drivers yeah so uh, the first thing I would like to talk about is 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 how application point of view uh, your driver looks like and how an application can talk uh, can use your driver. Here here I've got a standard C sharp, C -sharp application. This is the form. This is this is a text box uh, and uh, pretty standard stuff. Uh, kids do it these days. <clears throat> And, and and it's it's a like like it's a great great product uh, Visual Studio and uh, Express version of it is is being distributed by Microsoft for free. So and it can really make fools look like you know software engineers. It's so much done. It's so much done is that uh, it's it's a really neat tool. Uh, probably the best I one among the best. Besides this, I also like Qt, Qt C++, also a great software. The entire ID is is, is very good. Now let's take. We have been we have been looking this this uh, this driver part of it. Uh, but but let's take a look about take a look about how I have implemented it inside inside the form. So this is this is something I uh, this is how I have initialized because these are my so my 485 is on COM1 and this, these are the settings that I am using. I have, I have set up inside my PLC so the same thing has to be you know, set up um, uh, here also. I don't have a COM port device connected now but uh, I'll have, I'll have, uh, I don't really have a COM port device now but I'll have it <coughs> once I connect it to, uh, I'll have my BAFO converter once I connect and then <clears throat> ah, this is pretty standard stuff here uh, in, in any of my C sharp application I, I add a application level handler so that if, if everything is not handled then this is where you know you are caught okay so this is one part and and this is a little piece of code that will help you what I'm doing here is that I'm scanning, I'm, I'm, I'm enumerating all the processes which are running on this PC and I'm, I'm taking the current process which, which my application is part of, this current application is part of instead. And then I'm, I'm, I'm uh, giving it a higher priority so that your operating system, the scheduler of the operating system knows that, yeah, yeah, I mean, and then and, and gives you gives you schedules you more often otherwise you know uh, for some reason you know if, if your OS finds your application to be low priority then probably it might even skip it and might not be giving you enough RAM you know that's and that's one part second part is that uh, since our driver is is written on the same thread we have not quite used threads here and, and so my drivers are blocking right so to get rid of that and the way you want to be so I assume that the application calling it has to or the application calling it would create 
thread and then then run on the separate thread so that your user interface this portion yeah it doesn't doesn't get stuck so I've got a thread here I'm, I'm calling it background so that when you cl close this thread you know when you cl close the application you know everything is <coughs> uh, RAM is cleared and, and the thread is also closed and my, I, yeah this is important I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm calling the priority of the thread to be high you know the enumeration is you don't want to be going highest because uh, highest is like if, if you screw something inside your driver and your uh, thread is highest priority then it can even lock your operating system yeah yeah so this could be dangerous at times but uh, above normal is something I, I usually do for my drivers on the, on the application side and this is the this is the application uh, app level uh, handler it shows you what you know error has occurred if it's not caught and here I'm, I'm making a <coughs> function and the function is like I'm, I'm, I'm first uh, making it thread safe and this is a cheap and dirty way of doing it I'm sorry guys I don't have really have time you know to write a proper um, proper you know, code but by, uh, the, I, I, I usually cheat <laughs> by not checking for illegal thread calls I mean <laughs> well and, and then I'm, I'm making I'm really uh, I've got I've got a byte array here and byte array is, uh, is is defined here you know here oh sorry it's a short array yeah this is mod versus 16 right so so and I'm, I'm, I'm here uh, essentially calling it over ad address 3805 and the way I've got 38305 is that I went to my PLC program which is already written and running and tested then I got the address of then I got the address of the variables I wanted to read then I took my manual and then I uh, converted that address to a Modbus um, equivalent and then that that is how it was so it turned out to be 38305 if you are a SCADA program and you, you know it already and if my uh, I call this static method and then fill the values up here and if, if I get success then uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm converting you know I'm showing you all the va values all the channels uh, only seven channels okay doesn't matter and uh, in case uh, I'm actually putting it into a string so that the way why I'm not directly writing to the text box is, box is that if you just write it to the text box your text box flickers every time you know you you write values to it so I'm to minimize that I'm writing it to a text box only if uh -oh. Uh, I'm writing it only if uh, my previous value has changed. I mean, I have you, you you can't see that code because I have not implemented it. But the you know idea behind was you know was same. And also I'm clearing uh, error status. And if it fails, then I'm, I'm I'm you know giving you the value up here. I mean, what actually went wrong uh, should be printed here in the status level. And then again, I'm catching it, and then finally, I'm, I'm calling my thread to wait for 1500 milliseconds, and it's it's like uh, the while loop goes for it. But there's one thing you want one thing you want to be noting here is that while loop entire catch try and catch block is inside the while loop, and reason I do that is that so, if something goes wrong, you know, I still be inside that while loop. My loop is not broken. If this exception was outside while loop and I was just trying to you know run while loop only on this portion of the code up here uh, it would have been tough if in fact it, it would have broken my loop if, if, if any exception was caught and that is how uh, this is something you don't want to miss in your production code yeah you always want your uh, while loops to to, to 